Hello, everybody. Hello, Morrison from Australia. And hopefully, hello, Kwan from Phnom Penh. So we are here in Paris, in the heart of uh, the 6th Street in Saint-Germain-des-Prés at Gallery B. Uh, just before I, I start to show you the, the painting and exhibition we set up here, uh, let me say a few words about the gallery Batia Sarem. So, as you know, the gallery is based in uh, Siem Reap. Um, actually, we are celebrating, we were celebrating yesterday our three-year anniversary. Um, we opened in 15 December 2018, and since then we achieved five exhibitions. We published uh, four catalogs, and but of course we have been closed uh, since October 2020 because of the COVID. We are still closed currently. We don't know when we will reopen, and this is why, by the way, we decided to in a way, um, do what we should have done in Siem Reap in Paris. Invade Gallery B, which belongs to uh, uh, Lieben Luck and, and Lieben's father, with the opening of uh, an exhibition we had planned uh, with two artists, and, and, and I'll go a, a little bit later uh, on that, and I will show you the show, and then I will ask a few questions to Morrison and hopefully to Quan, if he's there. The goal of Batia Sarem was really to invite uh, and to show and to promote Cambodian artists or, or artists based in Cambodia, uh, whether their work are related to the past, the present, or the future of Cambodia. And it was important to us uh, to uh, promote this art scene and to show the diversity of this art scene, uh, the, the innovation of this art scene, which is extremely strong. Uh, for several reasons. I mean, Cambodia has a very interesting art scene for several reasons. One being, of course, the tradition of uh, Khmer art, which can be sometimes uh, for uh, anchor art, which is absolutely overwhelming, sometimes overwhelming for artists because it's so powerful and so present. So, um, and also, of course, all the history uh, of, of uh, recent history of uh, Cambodia. And uh, now also the rapid growth, the changes that are going very quickly in the economy, in the society also has triggered a lot of things in the art scene. So uh, the, the, the idea was to gather two artists uh, in this show. Uh, it was the, the second time we did that first exhibition was also with two artists. And it was a little crazy idea because Morrison and Kwan have not much in common. Uh, they are not from the same background, they are not from the same generation. Um, it makes sense because I think what gathered them is this, this strange mix of uh, maybe an approach of quite traditional, I mean, a certain traditional school, or they're both in a certain area of, let's say, landscapes. Um, but the interesting thing with those two artists is that they maybe have traditional subjects, but the way they do it is absolutely not traditional. They completely decided to invent almost their own medium. Uh, from from scratch, if we could say, and and what's what's really interesting also is that they are very much in the idea that um, their work is beyond something more. It's it's like belonging to a, a life cycle, and their work is is in a way inside this life cycle of objects of nature, because there's the idea of recycling. In this work. They use, I mean, of course, it's a tradition in, in modern art or in, or in contemporary art to use objects that actually weren't meant to belong to the art scene and to, to, to integrate them in art or in canvases. But they do it in a very personal way. And, and what's also very interesting is that a way that is very rooted in the place where we are, where they are, I mean, in Cambodia. And it is very striking for, of course, Morrison, who uh, really uh, use the Cambodian tradition and, and, and really pay tribute to it and, and in, a, in a way that uh, the things that should have been lost normally or gone to garbage are suddenly alive forever here. So this is the Tree River Delta and you see so it's a special ink and we will talk about it this morning later on paper. Quite a large mm. format. Um, and well, it's very difficult to know what it looks like, but suddenly it looks like uh, uh, a delta of river, or but you can see something else. I mean, you can see whatever you want, but I think, and this is a question also I would ask Morrison, uh, whether is he a, really a figurative painting or is he, uh, is, is it a little more 
getting towards abstraction. Yeah. I think this is also what I'm doing. You see the work of, of the typical work of Marisol, and so in his typical stamp that, of course, he will explain a little bit more clearly. And the fact, of course, what's, what's very, very important for Morrison is the way the stamp is pressed on the paper is uh, the strength of, of the print, of course, will make the drawing. And this is very interesting, is that the more the, the drawing itself, the pressure he applies to the, to the, to the, the work on paper. Uh, so this is a very uh, emotional, physical work that you will relate uh, very simply and very easily. And also it's a work where you will see several things. Wherever you are, you will see different stuff, whether, whether what, what your background makes. But, but I think, and, and you can see here what gathers the two works, is that I think the two artists, um, they, they really think about the idea of uh, writing, of letters. You see those, uh, the sign, the motive that repeats in the case of Morrison, and you see the letters uh, in the case of uh, Quan, and you see that these letters, they don't really mean something. I think Quan has completely invented that, that, that language, that alphabet, that, that is derived from Sanskrit, but, but it's his own alphabet. And we'll see, uh, it seems that the, 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 the writing, the, the stamp that repeats itself mm. from, from, uh, from Morrison also is, uh, is also, uh, is also is, is like an ideogram. It seems to mean something. Uh, and, and I think uh, also then the two artists are really thinking about language. Uh, of course, they invent their own language. They invent their own media, but they also invent their own language. And I think this is something that really gathers them. Although they are very different, they really uh, think about the idea that language has an aesthetic and emotional uh, impact on people. And I think, of course, we, we, we see that kind of, of stories in many, many paintings, mm -hmm. but I think we, we Case of two artists, it's very interesting that they are in Cambodia and they are and, and they were in the case of, of uh, Morrison and, and they still they are still there and still working there in the case of Quan, but they are still thinking about how painting, how art can visual art can be connected to language and can to language and can reinvent language and can give you a kind of language that will speak to your feelings, that will speak to your heart, to your body, to your emotions, not to your mind. So this is very, very interesting, and I think this is why we, uh, and, and I, we chose these two artists, because uh, uh, they really go to something quite deep, in a way. Um, and this is, not, this is not always common. Uh, we find this kind of artists who are actually thinking, elaborating uh, something about language. Um, so uh, I think I've, I've talked a lot now, uh, so, and I'm sure that Morrison really speak. Uh, I can see him now, but, but I asked him. I can listen questions. to you talk all day. I know, me too. That, that's the problem. <laughs> the, so, uh, actually, maybe I'll do a little tour of the, of the show uh, with Levan accompanying me. So, here I will stop here to this, uh, to this drawing with Morrison. Um, mm. And Morrison, I want you to, because of course, all the visitors we marked. Here in Paris, they remark because they know what it is. This is the river, and this is a very, very iconic uh, view of the map of Paris because you know Paris has been separated by uh, the river with the left bank and the right bank. And this is a very famous way of looking at Paris. Yeah. But what, first, I, I, I'm really interested in Morrison, and I was talking about that. Is that of course we recognize the sand. But there's something, of course, strange about your drawing because the city has almost disappeared. So it's a map. Yeah. It's, yeah. Are, you, are you trying to, to draw Paris or are you trying to do something else? <laughs> no, seriously. My first time to Paris was in 1990. And the, the plane actually flew over Paris. So I do remember that scene of that amazing river that just like, it's actually sitting on a plane, looking out the windows at the rivers and deltas in Cambodia. That's one of my favorite things. So this painting is done for memory with the help of a map because I haven't seen that for quite a while, but I, you gave me buzz, you know, saying everyone comments on, on this, this here. Um, I like to do um, a map of 
wherever I'm actually exhibiting. So the last exhibit was in Phnom Penh and the, I entitled that one Chattamok. So it had the Mekong River, the Tonle Sap and the Basak River all converging where this, this was. But if you look at this work, it's just this repetition of this same dot. And the dot is actually created from the stalk of the lotus flower. So in this piece here, so, you know, the stalk's about so long. And whenever I ink and stamp, I, it breaks down. So I have to keep cutting it. So in this work here, I think I used about three stalks to actually create that work there because my brushes break down. But to explain your technique here, is that actually you use the lotus flower for the ink and um, as a, as a yeah. brush? Yeah, so it's applied to the paper with the stalk of the lotus. So the stalk of the lotus is my brush and I ink that to actually produce these marks. Now the actual ink, I learned um, ink making in Hanoi. Outside of Hanoi, there's a UNESCO paper village and they make ink from bamboo leaf. So I went back to Cambodia and, and developed this same ink technique making with um, lotus flowers. But the flowers I use, I would only collect them at the temples. So people would go into the temples. They would offer the, the, these flowers, and the flowers would be filled with their love and gratitude, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They would offer them to the Buddha. The next day, they're, they're thrown out. So the monks were were quite happy that I would actually go take recycle these flowers. So it's the actual petals. So that I would dry, burn, sit on rainwater for one year, and then add fixatives to them. I have here's some of the ink here. It's yeah, this one's probably about five years old, so it's really really fine. It's lovely, and that's in a um, a little um, what's it called? That pot from uh, Leon. One of the wine bottles from Leon. So that's what I've got my ink in here at the moment. So another thing I actually do, my background is weaving. So I've taught myself to count things. So when, when I weave, I need to count the number of the threads, the shuttles, et cetera, et cetera. So when I started doing this work of the, the marks on the paper, I found that I was actually counting them. So all the, the works I've been doing over the years, I write on the side of the paper. You see, on each of the drawing, you see the number that Morrison just next to the signing. Yeah. And so this one here, I don't know if you can see that, but that's 3359. That's the exact same one. So this piece of paper yeah. came off from that. So this is the actual tally. That's the number of those, of the dots within that painting. So every painting I do now, I keep this data and this data here, this is the, the works that you have in Paris, all of this, this here. 20, 23,930 dots you have there in Paris of mine. So the, the accumulation of all of the works I do, I run a tally. So the smallest work I did had one dot. The largest work, 20,189, that's in New York. Meter 70 square, big piece. But um, the accumulation of all of the works are just over half a million. But I have yeah. a, a goal of five, five million and five dots. So I plan that's probably 20 years of my life to, to reach that goal. <laughs> but it's fun, I love it. Yeah. So it's you're great. talking before about, <laughs> about the pressure of the stalk. Yeah, so it, it, it is the pressure of the stalk. It is the very first inking from the ink to the paper. Sometimes the ink gets stuck. This is a cardboard yeah. cutout of a lotus. So it has all these holes. So sometimes one yeah. of the, 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 the holes gets filled with ink. And so when I pop it on the paper, there's like eight holes and one, one hole all filled in. But that repeats within the lines that I do. So it's this repetition of the, yeah, see on the right side there, or is it your left? Yeah. It's this repetition of mistakes 
that create this visual mindset thing that's happening in my work. Yeah, see the, the fourth row on the right there, it's just, yeah, a little. Sometimes there's a little break in the stalk, but, and it, it just continues there. So I have to keep cut, 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 cut. So all the off cuts I keep as well. So I keep, I keep the number count. I keep the off cuts of the stalk. Um, I keep those. I try and keep everything that I do. Sometimes I spill the ink, so I grab a, a piece of paper and I make one of those butterflies. So I keep all of that. For me, it's, it's holistic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's very important for you is that it's, uh, as I said, the, 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 the holistic idea, the recycling idea. So how, how, how yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Really integrate whole process that, that, that goes beyond it. That's very important. Also, I, I see that uh, mm -hmm. as, as some artists, you are very systematic, like this, this method, this process that is all as important as the as work itself. And, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so to, this is, this is, yeah, yeah, this is one, one, one work that I did. So I keep all these records. Yeah, yeah. this was the, uh, the, the Chattamock, the, the Phnom Penh River that I did. So okay. at the end of the day, this, I keep this and I love selling the art. I love the art going global, but I love to keep a little bit of memory that, myself. Is that so when, when you when you draw this one clearly you thought about the, the, the sand before you you, you you draw it? For this one, for example, I mean it's a landscape or do you let go by the flow? This one was interesting. So so uh La Seine was I, I did a, a big drawing, uh, a sketch, and then I followed that precisely to create that work. This work here, this was the first piece I did after Corona lockdown. Um, it, it's quite disjointed. It's got all these things happening. I actually dreamt it the night before I made it. So I work from the image in my, from my dream directly onto the paper. It was these, these, this single, it's this single broken line with these, I don't know what they are on the outside. I really don't know, but this is what I like with my art. I may have an idea of what I produce e.g. whatever it is, it's a river or, or, or someone or something, but then someone else will come and see it and go, it's something completely different. I love it. I did um, uh, the, the river in Batambong, these two lines coming like this. Someone came in and said, oh, that's a lady's leg. And I looked and I went, oh, yeah, I suppose it is a lady's leg. So that's what I like about my, my work and, and talking to people about my work is what they see in it as well. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, also like the fact that other things in your work, which is great, or maybe they will only see the pattern. Maybe you know, maybe they will only see uh, sign. Uh, all these, yeah. Uh, not necessarily something like landscape or, or, or more like a shape, and and just the beauty and the, the, the balance of a shape, which is which is, this is why there is something maybe uh, really. Uh, uh, in, your, in your work and also what I really yeah. like in your work are all these constraints this process which is extremely in a way very elaborate very freedom sometimes because we, although the fact that you are constrained of your material your process you have to process the ink you have to find the stamp you have to have all that and, and so that that requires oh. a lot of production and there's a lot of constraint in your work but sometimes with this within this you completely free. You see that with all the variations of your drawing, I mean, it illustrates the way that uh, an artist, whatever all the constraints he puts on himself with the process, he has a lot yeah, of freedom yeah. inside. The yeah, you're talking about the constraints. I, I, something came to mind so you know in cambodia i go okay today i'm painting i'm just going to paint all day long first thing i need to do i have my ink already first thing i need to do is i need to go get some lotus flowers because i need the actual stalk i hop on my bike i go to the market no flowers today <laughs> i can't i can't paint today so okay i'll do something else but there are these constraints that limit my creativity. There's different size stalks. So there's thin and then there's fat kind of stalks. I like something kind of in between. That's what I've discovered I like. But 
Um, it only lasts three, three days and then I have to throw it away. We have a, a small word that is framed over there and a very, very, some few of them, which is really beautiful uh, and I think is to me completely yeah. abstract. I mean, it, 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 it more, yeah. more makes me think uh, really some, a real shape or a planet, I don't know, or an eye maybe, I don't know, or something to play with the light. Uh, but it's, it's amazing the way play with the contrast here. I think it's really, really strong on a small format too. I mean, you, you do larger formats normally, but these small formats are really, yeah. really amazing. You know, with these small formats, I love putting three or 20 together because yeah. it's this repetition again of the small format that are all individual, but they, mm. yeah. So with this, this series I did here, the uh, start on the left and the right actually co commence, it's where the, the next work starts. So by putting them together, they start there, but the continuation of the top and bottom they, that varies, but yeah. And I love, so the top section and the bottom section are actually darker than the center section. I've got yeah. that created as well. That's from the pressure of the lotus stalk. So it's a lot of yeah, yeah. kind of memory. When I'm doing Chinese uh, Shan Shui rivers and mountain scenery, that, I love doing those and it's, you know, really difficult. I don't do the entire painting as one. I start like a printer. I do one row at a time. So in that sense, it's me very mechanical that I just have to repeat, 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 but getting the darkness oh. and the lightness like a printer does. This one, this one is uh, yeah. the really, so the one I was yeah. showing is really uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah. And you are really between the landscape and the body part. I mean, you don't, you don't really yeah. know where you are. Three River Delta, this is my seventh version. I did my first version and I loved it. So I, I was going off to Phnom Penh that afternoon. So I rolled it up and put it somewhere safe. And I came back and I lost it. I couldn't find it, but I had that photo. So I've reproduced it now seven times. But it's these chasms and these gaps that um, I really love that look and I love reproducing this one. So, you know, I remember doing it as a seventh time and as I was starting to paint, I go, ah, oh, you're starting to form, you're starting to come back to me again. It's, it's lovely. We haven't, we haven't shown the other parts of your work, which is more, uh, I think, painting and, and colors. Colors, you use also uh, colors in other works that you are doing now, I know. Will you, will you, yeah. will you use the inquis color too? Can you color it? Basically, with ink making, anything you can burn, you can make ink from. So it, it is an ash. It is a sort. It is black. I've just yeah. chosen oh, yeah. to to make oh, yeah. the black ink from lotus petals. Um, here in Australia, I've just um, worked out a, a fantastic yellow. It's really vibrant. It's from a local flower, which they call the soursop. It kind of looks like a clover. Um, but the, the flower comes up. So that yellow is fantastic. And I've been using some gum tree bark to get some colors. This, these ones here, um, the darker areas on the two sides, this was something that new that I was developing to create, see the top section of that, it's, it's just a double line, but on the bottom where the line goes out, I've made that darkness quite a uh, dominant area within these works. So it's a technique that I've, I'm just starting to do that. Yeah. Wonderful. It's this, this repetition, this repetition of day by day going dot, 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 dot. And then a mistake happens and you go, oh, what's that? So I repeat that mistake and I find things appear to me. So I'm really interested to see how my work will change in 20 years. Still the same dot, dot, dot with the lotus and the ink, etc. but see how it will evolve. 